Got to talk about this. This is uh, true and uncovered this before. I think it's the Utah guys. But this entire story is so wild. Daily Mail. But this is the funniest goddamn thing I've ever seen. American fugitive Nicholas Rossi, who faked his own death and fled to the UK to avoid rape charges, steams his glasses up with rage as he tells Dateline he can't walk while insisting he's a Brit called Arthur Knight. That is the most insane fucking headline I've ever read in my entire life. Let's take a look at what this video accompanies. I, I already know it's going to be awesome. We were once a normal family, but thanks to the media, our lives have been interrupted. And we'd like privacy, and I would like to go back to being a normal husband. But I'll, I can't, because I can't breathe. I can't walk. Uh, people say that's an act. Let me try to stand up. Let me try to stand up. Exactly. Exactly. What do you say to, to someone who believes... Okay, I need the full one. Give me the full shit. I need the full Monty. Uh, that's insane. That's actually fucking awesome. Um, this, he's from Cranston, Rhode Island. This is a 24-minute documentary on it. No, I want the full one. I want the new one. I want the newest version. I need to know more. I mean, this is one of those things where it's like, this is the most incredible thing I've ever seen. Believes that, that you are Nicholas Oliverian. I am not Andrea. I am not Nicholas Oliverian. And I do not know how to make this clear. What do you say to people who say these are crocodile tears? He's putting on a show. This is all an act. <laughs> oh, Ika. Andrea, no, that's, that's a low blow. That's a right low blow. Dude, if you rock these glasses publicly, I you're you're gonna have some of the most fire content, like unintentionally, some of the most fire content that we've ever seen. Whether you're like that eugenicist couple who's like, we are gonna make the superior race by having sex a lot and almost exclusively for the purpose of reproduction, or this guy who is faking being British and is nowhere near as good as I am. With his fake British accent. This is the case of Nicholas Rossi, the extraordinary story of a U.S. fugitive found in Glasgow. To locals, it is known as Glasgow. But to Nicholas Rossi, it's a second home. I fucking can't. I this is so good. It's so fucking good. Oh, come on. No, nah, his is better. As an actual, you're capping. Chat is the top of the fucking hour. It's true. Why did you put my accent on there too? Like that's the weirdest part. Yes, yes. Let the ten tens roll. You motherfuckers love when a chatter debates me. We get it. We get it. Chatter solidarity. Here, demonstrate real chatter solidarity by allowing uh, non-subscribed to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour by gifting subs. Okay. Here's the three-minute ad break now. You two can avoid the ads at the top of the hour as long as you subscribe for $5 or for free or get gifted a sub. If you're lucky, Speed Razor, think of it if I get the subs, allowing five people to no longer see the ads at the top of the fucking hour. Who are you? Hi, I'm Arthur Knight, and this is my wife, Miranda Knight. Are you Nicholas Rossi? No. Are you that Nicholas Alabertian? Absolutely not. Are you Nicholas Brown? Yes. Police say this man has lived his life under at least 16 different names. They believe he fled from America to the UK to avoid rape charges in Utah. Then, in 2020, they were told he was dead. Just under a year ago, police believed they had found the fugitive. Bro, what is this fit, my boy? I mean, this is a Batman villain fit, dude. This is literally some penguin shit. 
Are you fucking joking me right now? What the hell is happening here? In Scotland. Pulled it over a lot of people, but he got fooled. Did the family believe Nicholas had died? No. He's not dead, he loves life too much. People who knew Nicholas, Rosie Nicholas Aliverdian, claim that it's you. DNA doesn't lie. I know my husband does not have tendencies as a rapist. That's the weirdest. Like, that is the weakest defense, dude. You just, what the fuck? Like, you hit the, look. If this is a real thing, okay? If this is a real thing, your answer should be, what the fuck are you saying? Like, this is such a wild thing to blame me. Here, I will take a DNA test immediately. She said, my husband does not have the tendency of a rapist. Like, yo, British people who do rape and pedophilia have the funniest defenses for uh, doing the rape and pedophilia. It's always, it's the Prince Andrew type defense where you're, it gets me. I mean, she's not even British, I don't think, or he's definitely not. But it's so funny to me that, like, they picked up on that tendency where it's like, Prince Andrew was like, like, Oh no, famously. Oh no, as you can see on this day, I was wearing uh, my non-raping shirt. This is a shirt I wear when I uh, am, am not intending to rape a child. It's like, bro, a normal human being would never craft that sentence. Okay? What the fuck is wrong with you? Or like, oh, I could never rape. I am, uh, you know, I, I do not sweat. Because I lost my sweat glands at the Falkland War. That's right. I don't sweat. Um, except uh, I do now. I'm sweating currently. But uh, there, was a, there was a moment uh, in my life where uh, I was uh, incapable of, of sweating. non Well, very capable physically of non But uh, incapable of sweating. Just a little bit of non -sere. He's a con artist, is what he is. I call him a jellyfish. Because a jellyfish, you can't pick it up, there's no spine to it, but it has long tentacles and it can sting you. Uh, is he capable of doing it? Anybody's capable of doing anything if they want to. I just, you know, oh, I just, you found I'd it. be very happy though, just to see him stay and remain behind bars. These are very serious charges that this man faces. Dateline, dead man talking. That's the, that's, uh, I need to get it. I don't have an NBC Universal pr profile, so I can't watch it right now. But maybe we can rip it and watch it. They claim this man faked his own death to evade no. those charges. Did you fake your own death? Sharon, uh, we're sitting having a conversation. I've never been dead to anyone. It's a story that began with an arrest in a Glasgow hospital, and it continues to attract international headlines. Rhode Island is more than 3,000 miles away from where the individual at the centre of this case was arrested. It's here many believe they've always known the true identity of the man behind the mask. Who is Nicholas Rossi? Who's Arthur Knight? Who's Nicholas Alaverdian? This is Cranston a small town near the capital of Rhode Island, where Nicholas Aliverdian spent most of his childhood. He lived with his mother and stepfather, David Rossi. The singer, who was an Ingelbert Humperdinck impersonator, adopted him when he was eight. There's Nicholas. Nicholas took his step- Bro, this entire fucking story is absolutely unhinged. Nicholas Rossi's DMs to Truanon. Um, I would be glad to help you with whatever you're after, but I can promise you I'm not Rossi. For whatever that's worth, it has been proved and it will be proven in court. But my wife and I have been through enough. We have been trying to escape this nightmare. It is truly bizarre. And I have no clue who you are, but I'm taking a big risk here, telling you off the record that arrest will be made and leave it will be named by 1st of July. Please keep that off the record. I'm telling you what I've been told. They simply want to wait until after the election. However, good luck in all that you do. Okay, there's an hour and 28 minutes of more than that. Sorry. 
There's like almost an hour wait time in between this. However, good luck to uh, all that you do, and don't hesitate to give me a bell should you need anything. Cheers. Okay, mate, your podcast is prejudicial. I am not Rossi. This is bizarre. What do you want? Tax returns, driving license, government documents. Why? Why couldn't you ask me for proof of who I am? I'm in hospital with pulmonary embolisms at the moment. This is the last thing I need. Well, I mean the relation, what is this? Oh, this tweet was deleted by the author. Arthur Knight, alleged to be Nicholas Rossi by David Leavitt, responds. Here's David Leavitt with Viktor Yushchenko in Ukraine last year. Leavitt worked with the U.S. aid. Dude, what the fuck? I never actually watched this. I never actually watched this True on episode, but there's like ties to the fucking U.S. aid. What the hell? Oh my heavens. Just got rejected for a prom date, says Lieutenant Drip. Well, what the fuck are you doing? He said, I'm going to eat your dog. I'm about to ask my crush to prom. Wish me luck. I'll have to ask my crush to prom. Wish me luck. I'm going to eat your dog. I'd like to announce that I, everyone that I just got rejected from prom. Bro, you said that at two, nobody bit, and then you said it again at four. Keep your head up, King. And also, no, you can't eat my dog. Okay? Is that fucking uh, uh, Metal Gear Revengeance on your PFP? You are entirely too young to be knowing a game like that uh, if you're going to prom and shit. Metal Gear is a great franchise, though. I highly recommend it. Important for childhood development. Anyway, let's get back to this fucking insane video. Stepfather's surname, but the pair's relationship was nothing short of turbulent and at times violent. As a child, from day one, when I adopted him and his brother and sister, they weren't no bargains either. He was trouble. Hit his mother, hit his grandmother's, steal from the other two. Trouble going to school, want to run everything, always want to be in control. He, he just wanted everything his way. He was the devil spawn. I took a lot on. Three kids, her. Uh, I took on what no man would, I believe. But I did it. I loved them. I loved her. When Nicholas was around 13, he was moved into foster care, run by the Departments of Children, Youth and Families. He lived at various group homes where troubled teenagers are placed under one roof. It was at this time Nicholas got his first job at Rhode Island State House. He worked with politicians, helping them with paperwork and other administrative duties. The most common word used by those who knew Nicholas Aliverdian during his time here at the State House was persistent. They say he was a man who refused to take no for an answer. Bro, he could have been George Santos. Brian. How are you? Nice to finally meet you. Pleasure. Former state representative Brian Coogan took Nicholas under his wing. He initially thought the teenager was a genuine hard worker who had an unusually keen interest in the law for someone so young. He kept asking me to adopt him because he was didn't have any family and he was in a group home and a foster home and he was going to live on this very street a couple houses down. Why didn't you adopt him? He called me up one day. He oh my God. This is the most Rhode Island Italian man, dude. What the fuck? Look at the rings. Jesus Christ. This man is, this man is, is so awesome. I mean, he's literally dripped out the fucking wazoo. He's got wrists that were specifically built naturally for uh, girth. So he could... Uh, so we can fucking literally end up uh, becoming a professional arm wrestler. 
He said, Rep, you gotta come down the court, you gotta come down the court, they're trying to get rid of me. So I get down to the courthouse, and as soon as I walk up, he grabs me, hugs me, and embraces me like I was the only thing he had in this world. I said, Nick, whoa, what's going on? He says, they're trying to get rid of me, you gotta help me. And I went in with the judge, and he said to me, he goes, see this file right here? He had a file on Nick. So all the times that he was telling you and the other reps up the state house that he was being abused, cuts and bruises, those were all self-inflicted. He goes, I can't let you adopt him. Brian decided not to adopt Nicholas, even though the teenager claimed everything the judge said was a lie. Nicholas stayed in foster care and lived in Florida until he was 18. When he returned to Rhode Island, he took his claims of abuse to the next level. This is where Nicholas Aliverdian returned in his 20s to walk the halls of power in an attempt to gain support for his campaign to improve the children's welfare system. And I was subjected to torture, beatings, assault in various forms. I was refused to contact anybody, anybody at all. It was at this time he met Representative Ray Hull. Together they worked on legislation to improve the lives of children in care. Was Nicholas Aliverdian one of those kids who fell through yes, the cracks? Yes, yes. Absolutely. Or well, why would he be advocating so much to make the change if he wasn't one of them Tonight that on fell through the cracks? He was a young, young individual with some tenacity that wanted... Bro, what the fuck is this, dude? ...members one morning before school when Nicholas wouldn't stop hitting his mother. This is literally the worst audio I've ever seen. It's also like dead man talking, fire emoji, mushroom, star emoji. It's like, who is this for? Like, is this for, is, yeah, audio I've heard. Is, is this, is this for like Zoomers? I don't get it. For sure he was going to rate me, but I did. There were a couple of times I wondered if, you know. Like, I, I don't really understand. Like what fucking Zoomer was like, we gotta we gotta get this Poggers interview out, dude. It's so fire. Huh. Well, I mean the relation would be that you are in court proceedings that would see you extradited to Utah County to answer for a twenty two thousand eight rape that Nicholas Rossi allegedly committed. So whether you're him or not, there is a connection. Then how did you know David Leavitt was under investigation? Anyway. Wanted to change the world, and uh, you could really latch on to him. I'm thinking, wow, here, here, here is a young fella coming to us, I mean, our committee, and explaining why he, he needs changes in uh, DCYF. He knows it because he lives it. Around the same time, Nicholas was openly advocating against abuse. He had sexually assaulted a young woman in Ohio in 2008. So we met at... But, like, he's also on a court uh, in Utah for a similar charge. I don't even understand. There's lots in this incredible freaking our series on this Utah District Attorney ritual child sex abuse, fake Native American Mormon bishop. The name Nicholas Rossi comes up frequently. Rossi's being extradited for a 2008 rape in Utah County by Leavitt's office. He faked his own death a couple years ago and once wrote an essay describing other sexual assault charges against him as his personal 9-11. Like, this is what I'm... Dude, this thread is insane. He now lives as Arthur Knight in the UK. Knight claims that he's not Rossi, has never been to the US, and is being set up. Here he is now. The document referred to by Leave It in his press conference is a victim statement by the daughter of a former therapist in Utah County who was charged with a shit ton of rape, etc. Counts by Leave It's predecessor, Sturgill. That therapist was Leave It's friend and elder quorum president and also a member of a fake Native American church that administered peyote. The therapist also hypnotized patients who were sent to him for the conversion therapy by the LDS. All of this ties back to some way to the disbanded SVU in Leave It's office. He abolished it in 2020, which left a lot of sore feelings. He's also being called a woke prosecutor by his opponents in the upcoming June 28th election, and Sheriff Smith has endorsed his challenger. Here's David Leavitt with, with Victor, uh, uh, Victor Yushchenko in Ukraine last year. Leavitt worked with USAID from 2008 to uh, 2004 to 2018 to advise Ukraine's legal system 
and molded into the American model. Conspiracy or overlapping conspiracies in Utah County. No one safe members of the media have seen the victim statement. Rossi seems to know something, but the only way he could is if someone leaked it to him. If you can, please leak it to us. Arthur Knight, alleged to be Nicholas Rossi by David Leavitt, responds. The tweet was deleted, unfortunately, so we can't even see it. Rossi and Knight links to a host of documents posted by a woman in Utah in a reply to the thread above. They're pretty wild. If a bit difficult to parse in parts because of the redactions, one thing to keep in mind, Rossi was caught faking MySpace posts by a woman who successfully got him busted on sexual assault charges posts that would have exonerated him, so keep that in mind. I don't get it. I just don't understand what the fuck happened at all. At the, the campus cafeteria, he said, do you mind if I walk you to your class? So when me and him were walking into the basement, he starts attacking me, trying to kiss me rough against my face. He had his hands up my shirt, down my pants. Hey, well, and at that point, I ran up to my class. And I was like, this is, I think, just the safest place for me to go right now. And then I come out and he's waiting for me. And he's, I'm so sorry, I got caught up. I'm so sorry, I couldn't resist. You were just so pretty and just giving me the whole line. And then I go and I report what happened to the police. This happened in January 2008, and he was then sentenced in May of that year. He gets sentenced. The, the judge does find him guilty in my case. He had to register as a sex offender every year for 15 years. And that part was hard for me because I was like, well, what if I'm ruining his life? Um, but at the same time, I was like, if someone could have spoke up and prevented what happened to me, would I have wanted them to? Yeah, I was like, let's, let's end the cycle here. Let's get, get it documented. Because I don't know why, but it just it felt very orchestrated and rehearsed. Nicholas was initially wanted by US authorities over one charge of rape in Utah, dating back to 2008. He has now been served with two more extradition requests from a state, one relating to the rape of a woman in Salt Lake City and another for a sexual assault in the city of Orem. Investigations have also been... I mean, this guy seems like an unhinged freakazoid that goes on like raping sprees no matter where he goes in the country. You know what I mean? He's like unstoppable force. And carried out into various counts of fraud. He's been married several times. One in Ohio lasted just seven months. Brian claims Nicholas's second wife never knew about her husband's criminal record and she told him she was abused from day one. He called me up one day and he says, uh, Rep, I want to take you to dinner. I got married. I said, again? I mean, because he was supposed to be married like three or four times. He said, I want you to meet my wife, Catherine. We met at a restaurant in downtown Providence, a fancy restaurant called Flemings. And talking to his wife, very lovely girl, pure as snow, salt of the earth, very religious. So we parted ways, and then they went back to Dayton, Ohio. She called me up a couple of weeks after that, and she was horrified into the phone. Nick was locking her in the bathroom. He stole her identity. He got credit cards in her name. And she was just on the horrors. I said, Catherine, I said, you call the police? She goes, I call the police. I'm going to get away from them. Gonna... Well, what was your reaction when you got that phone call? I was horrified. I couldn't believe it. I started Googling Nick's name, and I used all his aliases. I found him. He's a registered sex offender. He's suing people. People are suing him. Um, he's got all sorts of court cases going on. Nick's a weird kid. I said I would help him out with some money. You need to get an apartment. And Nick had called me. He goes, oh, can you help me out? Can you help me out? And I said, yeah, Nick, I'll help you out. Dude, this guy being like the mo the key guy in this entire story makes it so much better. I'm sorry. I know this is not time for like anti Italia phobia, but like he's just a, a big, a whole, big old hunk of man, a big old meatball marron from you know Rhode Island being like the most a, a, a narrator in this situation is is great. And I just decided not to. Why should I, you know? I've given him money before. I loaned him money. Never paid me back. He says, you said you would. I said, no, I didn't. So we went right to his phone. He went to my folder. He went to the date, and he played it back for me. How crazy is that? So I said, I said Nick, what is that? He goes, I record every phone conversation, and I file him. I put him in a file. It's a dangerous kid. It's believed around 2017, Nicholas left the United States and traveled to Europe. Ray hadn't spoken to Nick in some time, 
and then received a phone call from him to say he was unwell. At this stage, the state representative said he had no idea that the man he was speaking to was a registered sex. Yes, Big Shuby, I did talk about the court documents for Daniel Perry. He was literally chatting multiple underage women, soliciting nudes. I am familiar. That was last week's uh, coverage. If you would like to find out more about the Daniel Perry court case and uh, what uh, what the uh, Governor Greg Abbott is intending to do, please go watch my video on it. I mean, not even last week, like two weeks ago, I think we talked about it, but... Sex offender facing further allegations. I get a phone call once or twice. I'm in Russia now. I have a, a sickness and he's going to be treated. Uh, and so that goes on. And then I get another call. I'm dying. I said, Joel, you can beat this. You'll be fine. His voice was scratchy. It's all coming back to me now. He was labored. I felt kind of sorry for the guy, you know, and I, I, I encouraged him. I said, I'll pray for you. <clears throat> this is not the end. Uh, there were many other people who come through this and uh, keep your chin up. You know, you'll be fine. Police agencies were tracking Nicholas and had asked those closest to him to try and flush him out. Next thing you know, I have the U.S. Marshals coming to my house. I had the FBI from Ohio call me. I had the FBI from Providence, Rhode Island call me. And they're all looking for him. Was Nicholas Oliverdian still Marshals. alive? Yes, he was still alive. And he was calling me every now and then. And when he called me, I said, Nick, you got everybody looking for you. You got serious charges. He was calm and cool on the phone, talk like a lawyer. Oh, it's all a big misunderstanding. And you almost want to believe him. Where was he? Where did he say he was? I asked him. Dude, I fucking love this guy. I, I can't get over it, dude. I literally, I love this man. He is the perfect individual, dude. He's fucking calling me. I said, Charlie, what the fuck are you doing? You got authorities calling me for fucking charges. You better stop doing the fucking rapes or whatever you're doing over there. What the fuck? Where was that? He says, I'm in another country. I'm nowhere around. They're never going to find me. He says, I'm married with two kids now. I said, married with two kids. I said, what'd you do? Add water? What's it? Like oatmeal? The last time. <laughs> time I talked to him, he called me and goes, rap, rap. I said. He looks like a teamster. Oh, he's he's uh, most likely a union man, but probably voted for Donald Trump and is very excited to vote for him again. Nick, wh what's the matter with your voice? I'm dying. I'm dying. I'm in a hospital bed. I'm dying. I, I, I said, what's wrong with you? He goes, I got two weeks to live. I said, what's wrong with you? And he goes, he says, I have lymphoma. I have cancer, I have this. I said, really? I said, listen, you cockroach. I said, cockroaches don't die. I said, you're not dying. I said, you're a sexual predator and you're trying to escape and you're, you're, you're faking your death. You are not dying. He goes, stop talking to me like that. I want to have peace with you. I'm on my deathbed. I said, and I was swearing at it. I was like foaming at the mouth. I said, you're a liar. I said, you're in a lot of trouble. They're going to get you. You, you can't fucking cockroach. <laughs> hide from the law i said you know you know the old saying the long arm of the law they're gonna get you nick live and local news and information on wpro providence a cumulus station sad news to pass along a voice you've heard on the air here on wpro nicholas alberti and he has passed away from a long battle with cancer leaving his wife and two children nicholas alberti was 32. his uh Passing is a very, very sad uh, incident for us, and uh, may you rest in peace, Nicholas. Next thing I, I hear a call from his wife, which I didn't know he was married. She's asking me to present the official proclamation of the passing of Nicholas Alaverdian as a memorial from the State House official. Which you did? Of course. How do you feel about that now? Well, I, from what I know now, to what I knew then, I feel kind of, you know, disappointed, but I, I would still do it again for the person that I knew who, who died or passed away. I would still do it, not thinking that he might have set this up himself.
Attempts were made to hold a memorial service at two separate churches. The priest here was told to cancel the mass by police. Officers believe that Nicholas Alaverdian may have been vain enough to attempt to attend the service himself to hear the tributes being paid. What did you think when you saw that obituary? I was furious. I said, this kid is a con artist, is what he is. The obituary did raise a few eyebrows in Rhode Island and suspicion quickly spread. I visited the pub where Nick gains a reputation for his gift of the gab and drinking ability. The achievement of downing 300 pints is celebrated on the walls of the Wickedon. They had a nickname for him here. That's right, they called him Three Questions Nick. What the fuck is... Bro, what is happening, dude? Because Nick would just pepper them with questions. And then they had a house rule. No, like, actually, what's going on in fucking Rhode Island? Someone explain to me what's going on in Rhode Island right now. We need to shut this shit down. We need to just literally figure out what the fuck's going on in Rhode Island in general. What is happening? No. It's like... Bro... I'm trying to not burp in the microphone. That's how much of a, that's, that's how changed I am. Okay. Anyway, uh, going back to this, like this guy, Nicholas Rossi is like this truly interesting, unique story of this, uh, prolific serial rapist, apparently who's now faking being a British man. And yet for some reason, like he is secondary as far as interesting characters in the story. Like, how is it possible that you go to, like, some random fucking guy at a bar and he just looks like this? I mean, this guy looks like... I mean, he looks like a, a founding father or a sailor. He looks like a lighthouse keeper, yes, for his profession. And then they had a house rule that he was only allowed three questions or they would cut him off. So he was known as three questions, Nick. Nicholas Alaverdian, according to everyone, died. Yes. Did you believe that no, Nick died? No, especially the crew here. They smelled a rat almost immediately. His name is Stephen O'Shea. These are the guys who are like, I'm actually uh, 11th generation Irish, but I went back to Ireland type dudes, right? Didn't I tell you when the, the, the obituary came out? Wasn't I the first to say yes, it? Yes, you were. <laughs> what did you say? The wicked and bartender. Fucking wicked, dude. Nick's not dead. Nick wrote his own obituary. I was more credulous because I, had been, I was contacted by his family to speak at his memorial. And his uh, supposed wife called me from Europe. The last time I spoke to Nick, he said he was living in Western Ireland. So I said to this woman, well, how are you doing in Western Ireland? She said, what are you talking about? I live in Geneva. I went, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> but uh, she said, Nick wanted to, you at his service because he loved what you wrote about him. And I thought, what, what did I write about him? I've never written anything about him. <laughs> and so she read me this very full, uh, quote a fulsome praise for him and uh, I said I, I didn't write that she said oh well no, no Nick uh, Nick cherishes it cherished it do you doubt it at all everything or do you think I doubt everything I doubt everything I doubt it. I have no idea I don't know him I thought I knew him but I don't and I I certainly doubt every aspect of his biography that he told me over in the UK, a man calling himself Nicholas Brown married a woman called Miranda Knight on February 22nd, 2020, a week before the date of death stated on Nicholas Alaverdian's obituary. This man began working for a Canadian woman who's expanding her business across the pond, but things quickly turned sour. 
She now believes the person she employed was Nicholas Alaverdian. I knew him as Nicholas Brown. In January 2020 is what? when we started. And by the end of the month, I was not very happy. He, he... It's insane that, like, the Utah part of the story is, like, so incredible and psychotic. Like, that it makes this part of the story seem sane. Like, there is cannibalism, or at least, like, not real cannibalism, but, like, the mention of cannibalism. The accusations of cannibalism on the Utah part of the story. Yeah. Peyote shamans and and whatnot, from what I understand. I didn't really look at the true and on coverage of this, so I don't really fully know what the fuck happened here. But I remember covering, I remember covering like, some parts of the story and uh, like a while back when it first came out and like local news and shit where I thought, you know, it was interesting. Um, but I, I never followed up on it, but it, it seems like Truanon did. He seemed passionate. Yeah, Nicholas accused the Utah prosecutor of... I mean, here, look at the fucking article title, bro. Look at this. Here, this is the Utah part of the story. Man accused of faking his own death to have extradition hearing uh, is, is uh, accusing the Utah prosecutor of cannibalism and sex trafficking. Joe, we pretty much couldn't understand anything he said because of his much-needed oxygen mask. With Knight's extradition hearing scheduled for Thursday, now he has a new and wild conspiracy that the Utah County prosecutor, who's trying to finally get him back to the United States to prosecute him. David Levitt is, he says, a cannibal and part of some child sex trafficking ring. If you look at Knight's Twitter, it's filled with allegation after allegation that Levitt is some sort of monster. And then it gets even weirder. The local sheriff's office is apparently actually investigating the allegations. Not only did they hold a press conference, but a sergeant with the sheriff's office confirmed that he'd been in touch with, yes, that same Arthur Knight, about the allegations. Obviously a wild story that needs answers. We reached out to the sheriff's office for comment, did not get a response. But here now is that Utah County attorney, David Levitt. Thank you so much for coming on the show. We're going to get these allegations in a minute. But first, let me ask you about Alaverdian. He's got this hearing Thursday. Uh, you sure you have the right guy and you're confident you're going to get him back here? Well, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what the Scottish authority does, Dan. The truth is, uh, you don't simply extradite someone from a foreign country unless lots of agencies have looked into this and used their limited resources uh, to get someone back. I mean, every governmental agency is, is short on resources. And so when you decide you're going to go after someone, you have to really be certain that that's who it is. And, and in this case, we had to make ourselves certain the State Bureau of Investigations and the state of Utah had to do the same. The United States Department Department of Justice and other Scottish authorities. And so you have four governmental agencies uh, from two countries who have all satisfied themselves that this is the guy. And uh, it will be up to a Scottish, a Scottish judge to decide whether, what the whether fuck? that happens. I think my lights just turned out. I'm going to yep. stand up and um, see if I can, excuse me. Yep. What no the worries. fuck? You know what I think Bro, what is happening, dude? This guy, the, okay, this story is crazy. There's ghosts involved now, okay? I'm no big city lawyer. I'm no big city paranormal investigator, but it seems to me like ghosts are involved in this. That's paranormal activity, brother. I know paranormal activity when I see it, brother. There's a new layer on this. I think did that. I think Nicholas Alaverdian is behind this. The guy can do anything. This guy can do anything. I'm telling you, watch out. I'm staying away from this guy. I want to be very clear. Uh, Mr. Alaverdian, I didn't mean to insult you in any way. Okay, um, bro, chill out. I mean, I, I like Dan Abrams more when he's just like a side guest on a fucking panel talking about how cops are great. Okay, what is this? My man trying to fucking run his own show. Uh, Gogolun. Gogolun. Gogolun Paltosunda. Thank you for the 20 of the subs. Uh, 
Um, no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go. No, that's yeah. and so I, I, you know, we don't have any say or any control over the extradition proceedings because that's handled by the Scottish authorities. Right. But I'm confident that Scotland, the Department of Justice, the State Bureau of Investigations, you know, they wouldn't be joining with us in this really amazing international collaboration without uh, they're being convinced that, that right. Nicholas uh, Rossi or Alibertian or Arthur Knight are all the same individual. Yep. All right. Let me, I got to ask you about this stuff, about the accusations that you're a cannibal. Um, how did this all get started? Well, you know, it's, uh, I, I ran, this is kind of a weird intersection between trying to do my job and prosecute a, a sex, uh, an alleged sex criminal on the one hand and local politics. Uh, I, I ran for a platform on a platform of uh, restoring checks and balances to the criminal justice system, meaning we got to get rid of plea bargains and we. Uh, He's a woke DA, bro. So that the jury can be a check on the prosecutor, and prosecutors need to stand up and become a check on the police. Okay. So then the sheriff's department, of course, complied with the this guy's a cannibal shit. Pretty wild, honestly. Like an incredible fucking, uh, uh, an incredible state of affairs overall. Uh, those are the two main functions of the prosecutor, which prosecutors have largely uh, either abdicated their responsibility to be a check on the police or have taken away the jury's role. That, that has angered the local sheriff, and the local sheriff is doing his very best to get rid of me in this upcoming election. And so seven days before uh, these, the, the, the ballots hit in in our jurisdiction, uh, we received a, a tip that the sheriff, in fact, was working with Alaverdian uh, to accuse me of uh, can cannibalizing and murdering children in a sex, in a ritualistic abuse ring. And quite frankly, Dan, that was about uh, all, you know, it, that was all I was going to stand. And so I stood and, and, and said, we need to have this sheriff open his office to an open, independent investigation. And if the sheriff truly is using the power of his office to try and take out an election. Like, I love that the woke DA seems to be also, like, you know, working with the CIA or at least worked with the CIA for an extended period of time from 2000, what, four till like 2014. So that's like, this is. God, I fucking love this. Utah is so insane. Does a woke DA even exist? I mean, they're not. Woke, but any DA that like runs on, we need to do criminal justice reform is automatically considered, automatically considered woke and paid for by George Soros. And, uh, they claim that, you know, uh, George Soros is, is, is paying them so they can do crimes to make crime legal. The prosecutor who, who is his check, then the sheriff needs to resign. Yeah. And, and I assume, I mean, the fact that he's working, look, we called the sheriff's office for comment. Um, but, you know, I'm out of time here, but you're not a cannibal, right? No, I'm not. Dan. Okay. All right. <laughs> nor, I, nor am I a murderer. I, need, I, I needed to ask the, I needed to ask the question. Um, David Levitt, I, I, come back on the show after the, uh, after the extradition hearing. I'm going to save some more time for it so we have a little more uh, time to chat. I mean, it's just insane that, like, this fucking guy, Nicholas Rossi, uh, literally successfully alleged that this dude was a cannibal and because he was a quote unquote woke fucking DA that, um, that people went along with it. Like, like the sheriff went along with it. And he seemed like he was determined, but then one day I just had enough and I text him because I didn't want to tell him verbally on the phone because he was very aggressive sometimes. And uh, then that's when he started to show me his smear campaign that he prepared. I lost a lot of money, not just the 40 grand, but, you know, hundreds of thousands because I had to do damage control. I don't think I'm going to ever see that money. Like I spoke to criminal lawyers over here and they're like, don't even bother. You know, he cons somebody and, then, and uses that money to con the next person. I just, you know, I just be, I'd be very happy though, just to see him stay, remain behind bars. Reports have emerged of uh, claims of, of fraud. I have a newspaper nothing report to do from a with Canadian fraud. businesswoman. Who uh, yes, of a, a Canadian business. I worked pounds. with that Canadian businesswoman. I this person is not British, dog. I'm sorry.
and I would love to show you how um, I uh, worked for her day and night, irrespective of time zone, and even enlisted my wife to help me work with her because she was so demanding. Early 2022, and a man claiming to be Arthur Knight was taken into custody Early. after fears he posed a flight risk. Jo yeah, it's pretty funny that, like, you fucking escape to Europe, and instead of going to, like, I don't know, a European country that doesn't have, like, an immediate extradition protocol to the United States of America, you went to one that has one. So now you're, like, getting fucking airlifted back to Utah. Just weeks earlier, he had been arrested while being treated for COVID in a Glasgow hospital, as the American authorities believed he was oh, no. Nicholas Aliverdian. Since news of his arrest, more women have spoken about their experience. Bro, what is this drip, though? Oh, shit. Waking up. No, she's not waking up. What the ever-loving fuck is this drip that he's wearing, bro? I mean... Americans will literally go to jail before learning a language that isn't English. Yeah, I guess. This is of Nicholas's behavior. Caught in Scotland last month. A man who made a name for himself in Rhode Island before we were told he died two years ago. This is, this is movie stuff, stuff. Despite making international headlines following repeated court appearances, this accused man didn't shy away from the spotlight and was keeping a keen eye on how events were being reported in Rhode Island. We were gonna run this story, who he was and kind of his background here and how things got to where they were. And we interviewed people who had known him. And the day before the story was gonna run, Arthur Knight called our newsroom looking to talk to the boss and basically talked to my boss on the phone for about an hour. I did an interview with him and his wife and that was kind of the first one and it snowballed from there and then he would keep calling and trying to say you should look into this and you should look into that and things about the prosecutor in Utah but I, it just struck me as why would somebody who claims they're not the person from Rhode Island care so much about what the news is reporting in Rhode Island except these are the news media outlets that he would have grown up watching and listening to and reading no 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 i think it's perfectly normal that a guy that's like living in glasgow would know about like uh a random rhode island local news uh, channels news is distracting from this no, it's not, dude. No, it's not. It's not distracting from anything, okay? Like, you just think that. I don't know why, because maybe you can only focus on one thing. But, like, this is literally one of the most uh, uh, fucking... Ay, ay, ay. Okay, we'll get to that later. I I'm going to go back to positive vibes, okay? Posy vibes right now. We're looking at a weird-ass dude. Is the game up for you? The game is just not... Even in Scotland, Arthur Knight was pushing his plea, claiming he was an Irish orphan who had changed his first name due to childhood trauma. He said he took his wife's surname when they married. The couple invited me into their Glasgow home and in... Uh, this, yeah, we're going to watch the Dateline uh, video. It's fucking bananas, but... ...insisted Arthur was still suffering from long COVID and that this was all a case of mistaken identity. The truth needs to be known. So why am I speaking to you? Why is my wife speaking to you? Because we care about our life and our love. This has all happened uh, the dates before you knew him. This Nicholas Rossi, when you actually read about what he's done, he seems to have done it consistently Over. through his- Yeah, she's like, you don't understand. Uh, he is done with the raping. Even if this is my husband now and I don't know anything about uh, who he was before we met, um, very clearly, uh, this is not a rapist. Uh, he does not have a rapist tendency. His yes. wife. So why is it literally going to stop when he meets me? I know my husband. He would never put me at risk. He would never hurt me, abuse me, do anything like what I read about this Nicholas Rosie. There is no evidence whatsoever that um, uh, there are tattoos 
and I've shown that to news reporter after news reporter after news reporter. Intensive care staff from the Glasgow hospital where he was arrested told the extradition hearing about seeing distinctive arm tattoos on their patient while they treated him for COVID. These appeared similar to the images held by Interpol. During his evidence in court this week, the man himself claimed he had gone into hospital without any markings and had been tattooed while in a coma for 18 days. That's the Crescent Brown University, yep, with the red and you got the black right there. What? A tattoo artist from Nicholas's hometown says his distinct ink could have been removed over time, but markings may still be visible. That top one would be a little tough because it does look like there's some scar tissue that would be going on with the books that are open, um, and then of course with the red. And can Bro, just fucking DNA test them. Like, I don't understand. What the fuck is going on? Like, what is this like, oh, uh, he might have gotten tatted, or he... Is that also, yeah, is that Brown University? Is that a tattoo of Brown University's crest? No shot. He said the DNA proved him innocent. Yeah, no shot it did. What the fuck do you mean? I think he's talking about one uh, of the of the cases when he says the DNA proves him innocent. Not that he's not fucking Nicholas Rossi or whatever. He's saying the DNA proved Nicholas Rossi innocent, which is also something that you wouldn't say as Arthur Knight. You would say that as Nicholas Rossi. And you treat the scarring. You probably could. Uh, you have to probably go to a dermatologist for that to see. Again, depends on how deep it is, too. I'm assuming all this removal is very expensive. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it can be very expensive. So that's why I tell people, you're going to get tattooed. Make sure it's what you want because it hurts a lot more and it's a lot more expensive to remove it. So, you know. It's now official. Arthur Knight is Nicholas Rossi, a.k.a. Nicholas Aliverdian. It's a court decision those in Rhode Island suspected all along, but it hasn't erased their pain of being lied to by a man they thought they knew. See that mask and wheelchair? That's bull. This makes it even funnier that he's like keeping up the fucking... He's just like keeping up the memes, I guess, for the fun of it. I don't fucking know. It's, it's very weird. It's very weird to be this way. That's bull. There's nothing wrong with him. He's faking for century, trying to get off. From what I'm hearing now and all the stuff that's coming out, my head spins sometimes. It's like, wow, wow. It's on him now to come forward. It's on him to say, hey, I did this. Is Arthur Knight Nicholas Rossi? Nicholas Aliverdian, as you know? I would bet my life on it that that's Nicholas Aliverdian. Nick's getting all this publicity, but it's really, it is about the women. It's so interesting because it's just like the little lies then are just these grand lies now that he uses as like a building block of who he is and how he's important. If you could say anything to him, what would you say? Smarten up. You're still young. Do the right thing. You know, you hurt a lot of people. End it. Do your time. Oh! Finally figured out his accent. I saw that guy. He was my waiter, and I totally dismissed him like everyone else does in his life. And I totally, she was wrong because he's a major, major, major influence on me now, and I feel terrible. <clears throat> that stupid English voice, was that me? Unfortunately, yes. You're really gonna like it. Yeah, thank God for Jonah Hill making Kanye no longer anti-Semitic. Which, of course, comes with the recognition that he was anti-Semitic. You know what I mean? Yeah, remember Russell Brand? Um, can we put this guy in jail yet? What is this? 